Hello everyone. We are so glad you're here. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, pull up a chair around the table here at the For This Moment podcast. My name is Laura Matthews. And I'm Megan Sternhagen. We're two sisters and Regnum Christi women with a desire to share the beauty of the stories of God's kingdom in the lives of women throughout the world. Our prayer is that this can be a space to inspire and encourage you in your own journey as you walk day by day, responding to the Father who has called you for this moment. Hello, listeners. I just wanted to give you some context before we begin this episode. Our guest today around the table is Mary Peach. She was adopted from Ethiopia in 2010 when she was almost 12 years old. She and her twin sister arrived to Northeast Ohio with their adopted parents without knowing any English. I hope this gives you some context as you listen to a story of someone who has embodied the understanding love of God. God bless you and enjoy the show. We are so excited to have our very first guest on today for this moment podcast. But before we introduce her, we just want to say how we're doing. Megan, how are you? How's how's life been? What you feeling? I, I'm doing great, Laura. I have had a lovely day. Um, it was one of those days where I had 10,000 mama, look at this. So I had a lot of like, wow, sweetie, that's really cool. So <laughs> I, uh, you know, I'm just enjoying life with my littles. And, uh, I, I just told my family earlier today, I heard a really loud, like thump, 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 smack. And my, uh, two-year-old had decided to go sledding on the stairs and, um, Classic. you know, <laughs> somebody said a boy's, a boy's life is a, um, constant experiment in the laws of physics. And, uh, I can attest to that with three boys. That's kind of, <laughs> you never know what's going to go flying or what's going to fall down or be jumped off of or climbed over or whatever. So it definitely keeps, um, one with, uh, you know, one ear open, one eye open at all times. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. What goes what goes up must come down. Exactly. <laughs> right? What about yourself, Laura? Well, I am just so filled with gratitude because I have finished my master's in psychology at Divine yeah. Mercy University. So I just I just have gratitude in my heart for everybody that prayed me through this degree. Um, and you know, they say it takes a village, it takes <laughs> it takes a community to help somebody through uh, grad school. So I yeah, I just have gratitude for so many people that helped me, that talked me through different things, that prayed for me that made me laugh when I was so tired. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of just where I'm at right now is just full of gratitude. So well, I can take partial credit because on all of your breaks, you would search for houses for me on Zillow. Oh. So I yeah. therefore am part of your mental stability. Basically. You are, you are. It was take my, credit little, for that. my little mental break would be to look for houses on Zillow. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's true sisterhood right there. Yes. That is. I love it. Yes. So let's yeah. get into our interview today. So we have the gift of having Mary Peach on. And I know we go way back. Megan goes even further back. Um, so actually, Mary just finished her degree as well with me at Divine Mercy University. So we'll get to graduate together. But Mary, could you introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, for sure. So I'm Mary Peach. Um, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio right now. I've been here about four years. Um, I'm almost 26. So it's just been it's been a great time here. I, I'm a teacher currently uh, teaching fifth and sixth grade religion at a Catholic school. Um, so that's my four, fourth year here as well at the school. Um, I um, have grown up just loving adventuring and traveling and all of those things. So anytime I get to jump into something new, mm -hmm. it's my favorite thing to do. So um, I'm excited to be here to chat with you guys and just like how full circle things, you know, how things come in full circle like this, because I've known Megan since I was almost 12, which is crazy <laughs> um, how long it's been. And then like Laura to know you as an adult now too, and then mm -hmm. to have studied with you and mm -hmm. get to graduate here in a few months together. Um, so I'm excited to be here and I'm honored. So thanks for inviting me. <laughs> 
Yes, for for our um, audience, I was in high school with Mary's older sister Rachel, and I I remember um, you and Martha coming when you were just wee little girls, and you were so adorable. <laughs> and uh, I mean, granted, I wasn't much older than you, but you know, when you're a teenager, you're like, oh yes, small child. <laughs> yes, the little girl, <laughs> the little yeah. girls. Um, yeah. But uh, so Mary, we we have a tradition, a long standing tradition on this podcast, um, of one episode. Um, <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, this is, in a way, our our virtual dinner table where we're sitting around having conversations, uh, just chatting. So one of our like kind of fun ways where we're going to be trying to get to know our interviewees is to say, um, so if this is our virtual table, um, what are we having to eat, Mary? If you could be serving your favorite or your ideal dinner to like the three of us, what would you be making? I will be making my famous homemade chicken Alfredo. Um, I I love a good old pasta chicken, um, all of the carbs. So with some garlic bread on the side, I just, that's my go-to and my favorite thing to cook my friends. So that would okay. be what I would bring to the table for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds so. I just have to say this really quick. My five year old Lucy, we were doing some sort of mini science class, and she was learning about omnivores, herbivores, and carnivores. And she said, Mama, is there a brutivore? Because I think I want to be that. <laughs> I was like, that's the best thing. I think I'm going to just <laughs> refer to that like that exactly. from now on. <laughs> I identify as a breadivore, so <laughs> respect my life choices and feed me bread. Yeah. I love it. I no, love it. <laughs> that sounds incredible, Mary. I'm all about that. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> well, as we as we sit around this table with our Italian food, and I think probably we'll have a glass of wine as well, right? With this, yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> We, we're we just so excited to kind of break open your story, Mary, and listen to your heart. And what, what our dream is for this podcast, this space, is just to hear stories of the charism lived out in the lives of Regnum Christi members throughout the world. So um, that, that heart of Christ that gathers us together and forms us and launches us as apostles. So mm-hmm. our first question for you is, when did you first get to know Jesus and when did he reveal his heart to you for the first time? Yeah, oh, good question. It's one of my favorites to answer because just the Lord has been so present, um, even in my young life, I would say. Um, my first experience was um, at a summer camp in Rhode Island back in 2010. So first year I was um, here in the States right after my twin sister and I were adopted. Um, as you can imagine, as a almost 12 year old, that like whirlwind of an experience being adopted and everything. Um like I said, I'm very adventurous, so I was so ready for new experiences, but at the same time, terrified. Um, and at this summer camp, I just remember an adoration, specifically the classic adoration moments um, with the girls. And I just remember like telling Jesus, like, I'm tired of like not feeling like people understood me. Like, I didn't want to ever have to justify my story or like explain like, well, how did that make you feel? Or wow, how did you feel when that happened and when you transitioned here and things like that? Um, And it felt like with everybody else I shared my story with, um, even in that short time, there was a sense of like, okay, I can explain it until I like lose like words and I don't have anything else to say. And they still won't get it, like fully understand it. And even for my twin sister who had gone through the same experience, seemingly, it was like still like she still doesn't get it either like I I can't explain how my heart feels what it is that I um what hurts and what brings me joy and the questions I have and I just remember telling the Lord that just in adoration just being almost like I would I wouldn't even say like disappointed but just in the sense of like just sad that like nobody else would get that and It was just like so clear as if he was speaking to me in like right there. He just kind of said, Mary, like, I get it. Like, I understand. I understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was just like he said it in a way that was like, 
it's not like, oh, I understand it. Once you explain your story to me and once you tell me everything that happened and share the memories, but actually I understand it without you even having to explain everything Mm -hmm. and having to justify those feelings you're having or, um, or rationalize every situation, every question that I had. Um, So there was just such a sense of, I would say, comfort in that moment where I was like, he gets it, he understands it. And I don't have to say anything. Like Mm -hmm. I, all I have to just do is like, just be with him. Um, It's kind of like when you sit down with one of your best friends for like a long time and there's not much you have to say, but they get kind of the situation and what's going on in your life. Um, so I've always just kind of said like, you know, like Jesus is just like an understanding God for me, like somebody who, who sees it and kind of receives me, whether or not I have the words to express what it is that I am feeling. So, yeah. Wow. Well, and listening to your story, Mary, I just, I, I, my heart just kind of breaks for you. Cause I, I mean, I could imagine even just slightly try to imagine just how exhausting that would be to have to be explaining yourself all the time Mm -hmm. and to, for God to touch your heart in that way, specifically where you didn't have to say anything because not only did he understand you effortlessly, but he was there. Like Mm -hmm. he was with you all the way and to just be able to find that that place of rest where you're understood completely. Like the, like I could just imagine the weight it would take off of your mind Mm -hmm. and off of your heart. Yeah, for sure. Like definitely, I would say like, I I left a different person from that camp, even though it was like six days later um, because I am such an overthinker, like processing everything, trying to like figure things out. And like I said, like, it's not anything that, like I could have figured out, or even if I thought I could, I still don't have things figured out by now. And, you know, it's been 14 years. <laughs> um, but it is like crazy to see that like in, in that moment, there was just such a confidence that like he was going to be there. And I knew that like, yeah, so I just left transformed. So um, it was a gift for sure. That experience. Adoration yeah. is so powerful. It's just so Amen. Uh, just his presence, right? To be in the mm-hmm. presence of the one who knows us so intimately, who loves us so intimately. And I, when you were talking, I just thought of that old song of um, you say it best when you say nothing at all, you know, just that, mm. that just being with, um, being with the other and that that be enough because you were fully seen and fully known. And what a foundational experience for you to have that as as a young girl and to, yeah. to be before a God who, who truly understands and uh, doesn't just say things like, oh, I can imagine what that's like for you, or I can kind of, kind of picture what you're saying, but truly say, not only understand, I was with you there um, in every step of your journey. Wow. Yeah, for sure. So Mary, um, the, the next question, or rather the follow-up, to that is, you know, after that close encounter in adoration, when you were young, um, how do you, how do you feel like God, um, continued to reveal himself in a way that then prepared you for your mission later on? Yeah. Good question. I would say like, again, my parents were very generous in helping us, you know, continue to have experiences within Raven Christie and ECYD especially, Um, So that like constant opportunity to um, be with other girls who are like minded to go to these retreats and summer camps where I was continuous, like continually like experiencing, encountering him within adoration Um, and even being at home too. like we went to regular adoration, daily mass, all of those things, Um, all of those opportunities, those places, experiences ended up being um, like opportunities and moments where I was like I'm getting to know him even more even though I feel so known by him so Mm -hmm. that kind of reciprocal uh, relationship where it's like when you first like you meet a friend you're like I want I have to spend more time with them like if I love them and I feel like we're going to get along and we have similar like uh, interests and things like that you want to spend more time with them to like 
see more of who they were. Mm -hmm. Um, And in those experiences, even in in the different testimonies of the consecrated women or all the girls that were there, there was just like a little bit more of him that I was able to kind of see and then kind of relate to my story to be like, yeah, I've always seen him like that. Or Mm -hmm. like, I've never thought about Jesus in that perspective, kind of like what you've said earlier, that he was part of my story, even when I didn't see him. And so when I see him in other people's experiences, it was very evident that he was just there for mine as well. Mm -hmm. And it kind of was like, the more I had it, the more I wanted it. Like I wanted to go to more retreats and more, like more camps and more mission trips to say like, I I want that. Like, I want to know a different part of him that I never thought was possible. And that's kind of what would happen. I would leave and then be like, wow, like I know Jesus in a way that I never thought I would. And I'm more in love with him than I thought I ever would be. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think from then until now, and even like, as I continue to grow as a young woman, that's, that's what I see. And in, in my like in my experiences and my relationships with people each one of those helps reveal a part of his heart that I didn't think was possible to see and me as as a sinful person and in this world where you're like what a gift it is to to like to know him like that um so all of those experiences have helped you know reveal that Mm. yeah I was just thinking um when you said like that that first encounter with Jesus, like it was so deep, but it's like, I want, I want to know you more. It just reminded me of like, you know, how sometimes you meet somebody. I don't know if this happens to you. I tend to overshare sometimes. (laughs) I tend to like, (laughs) you, you meet somebody and you're like, wow, this person gets me. Okay. So I just wanted to unpack something. And then later on, you're like, wow, that got deep really fast. (laughs) I probably should have like, you know, asked them what their favorite color was or, you know, what they like to do for fun or something. So I feel like sometimes those of us who, you know, either we're on a retreat or in adoration and you meet Jesus in like a really emotional, intense, um, like, very like foundational way. Like that's, that's the starting point, but then you go back and you're like, okay, like, who are you? Like, let's, let's get to know each other, Jesus. Like, let's sit down and, um, have a conversation. Let me learn more about your life. What would you have enjoyed? What would you like, what made your heart, um, you know, jump for joy? Like to, and, and I think like you were saying, it's, um, you kept coming back for more. You kept coming back and just like, God, give me more, how do I get to know this part of you, this side of you, this side of you, like a, like many faceted diamond almost. Um, Mm -hmm. And I just think that that's so beautiful because it brings back to mind that our Lord is a real person. He's a man, you know, my dear sister, Laura will attest to this, you Mm -hmm. know, as her, her spousal love for our Lord Jesus. Um, And he's a a person that we can actually get to know Mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Marion, can I rewind a little bit um, before you even had the adoration experience, just to fill in the blanks? Uh, were, did you were you Catholic even before you were adopted, or did you meet? When did you meet God? Um, yeah, that part of good your question. Life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I I was baptized and raised Catholic. Okay. Um, it looked a little different in Ethiopia. It was more Orthodox, I would say. Um, Coptic Catholic is what it's called. Um, the right. Um, so that was a gift that in the sense, like we did grow up with catechism and I was in church choir growing up as a kid. Um, and then to like be adopted into a Catholic family was Mm -hmm. just even more of a gift because they not only like maintained what we already had, but actually nourished it even deeper, uh, and made it more personal for us. Mm -hmm. Um, because before I was adopted, I would say, I kind of I practiced in the sense yeah choir it was about the experiences of like the people that I was with in choir and I loved church um I do remember my first communion being like a very monumental moment um I was 11 so I was a little bit older um I just could not wait for that more than anything in the world I just remember being so excited um 
And I think that would be like, I would say the start of that, of just wanting, knowing what I was desiring, uh, just not knowing that I desired it, you Mm -hmm. know, until, um, until the adoration experience and until later, later with more and more moments like that, that I was able to kind of dive deeper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that you just said moments because that's what the podcast is called is for this Mm -hmm. moment. And that just leads perfectly to the next part that we wanted to ask, which is um, when did you feel sent forth by God for this moment? You know, where you had this experience in your heart of, wow, the pieces of my life are starting to come together and it makes sense now why he's sending me forth in this mission, this mission or this apostolate, this ministry. Um, from the different experiences that you had in your life? Yeah. Um, I would say like two years later, like after that adoration moment, um, I just soaked up any moment where I was with the missionaries or with the consecrated or pre-candidates, all of that. And I remember meeting the summer ECOD missionaries mm. and they just, you know, very genuinely and free spirited. They were like, yeah, we're just giving our summer to Jesus and, you know, serving the others. And I was like, wait, what? What? This is a thing. I want to do this. Like, <laughs> this is the best thing ever. And I remember talking to my spiritual director at that moment. I was like, I'm doing this next year. Just tell me how we're going to make this work. Um, And all of that year, just spiritually, but also like mentally preparing for that. That was two years after I was adopted. And then I ended up doing my mission summer three years after in 2013. Um, I never like wanted to be a missionary more, Um, more than just, oh yeah, I want to go tell others about Jesus. But it was more, it was the beginning of helping others see the side of Jesus that I'd had like the opportunity of getting to see and in those different moments and conversations I had during my six-week summer experience it was all about like this is how I've gotten to know Jesus in the short time and how do I help these middle school girls at the summer camp or this lady at the nursing home kind of experience the same thing that I have or see a side of Jesus that I have so deeply fallen in love with in the in the few years that I like have truly known him. Mm-hmm. Um, so that just was so like easily, quickly activated. I would say like after my experience with um and my experience of him, that I was just ready to be like, let's go. Like I want to tell everybody else. I want them to feel the same way that I feel. Um in a and in a very real way. Like it didn't make life perfect. You know, I was dealing with so much being a teenager, um, kind of dealing with transitioning into just like family life and sorting through traumas and things like that. It like the, the mess was still there. It was still real life. Um, there was just so much of that that was alleviated because I knew there was a sense of even through that, I actually get to not only glorify God, but hopefully if one person gets to meet this Jesus that I know, um, that is my mission, you know, that is it. Like, that's what I can do. So it reminds me, uh, while you were talking, I just saw the woman at the well, like just who is this man that's told me everything about myself. And then she just runs and like has to tell everybody that she she knows about this man, this, this person that she knows and loves. And, um, I think that's just such a beautiful example of you are mission. Like we are mission. It's yes, we can do specific things and actions, but at the end of the day, we are all sent by the father, um, for, like you said, for such a time as this, whether it be, um, helping the woman at the nursing home or, you know, giving Jesus to this group of middle school girls, it's, uh, come meet the man that has, that has transformed my heart. So that is, yeah, that's so beautiful and encouraging for people to hear that um, you can do this no matter where, what stage of life you're in or where you are or how you may be feeling, you can still give, give the Lord to whoever's in front of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> beg pardon. Um, do you feel like, um, 
that that missionary experience and that desire in your heart to um, spread knowledge of Jesus then played a part in your discerning and then you're ultimately like becoming a teacher? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I had wanted to be a teacher for so long, but it was even in in those years of like, oh, and starting high school, what am I going to do? Um, we, what, what is it the career that would fit? Like wanting to be a missionary all the time, but at the same time, um, obviously the reality of like, okay, I have to work. I have to do, like, I have to grow up, you know, I remember <laughs> very legitimately thinking, what is the closest thing to that of how do I help other people have an experience of Jesus? And in this career as a teacher, especially teaching religion at a Catholic school, with fifth and sixth graders who are sponges that love to soak up anything. It has just been the most fulfilling, hard job, but very fulfilling place to be to see these students encounter Jesus. And you see it, like you see that light bulb go off and you're like, oh my gosh, like there it is. Like that they have seen him in a way that I remember seeing him. And they ask about that all the time. Like, Miss Beach, why are you a teacher again? And I tell them that like, I remember meeting Jesus at your age or close to your age and it changed everything for me. And I hope that one of you in here and in the four years I've taught, I hope if one kid has experienced Jesus the way that I have, like that's, that's, that's it. Like I've done my job, honestly, you know, and hopefully more, but it has come full circle in that sense, looking at, looking back, being in the classroom, seeing them, like talk about Jesus, explain their moments and experiences. You're like, okay, they get it. They, they totally see Jesus here and they know who he is. Um, and you bring yeah, them to so adoration too, right? I see on your Instagram, you, I guess it's Thursday, I think is when you yes. take them to, yeah. to adoration. Yeah. So. so we, we, every Thursday we'll do scripture Thursday. So we'll read the gospel together um, for the upcoming Sunday. And then we always go see Jesus in adoration on Thursdays and they love it. And if I forget, they're the first to remind me, Miss Peach, don't forget, we're going to adoration. I'm like, okay. So oh, I love um, that. Bring, bring the little children to me. Like literally, yeah. that's what you're doing. And yeah. don't you also have, again, from Instagram, <laughs> it's not like I yeah. follow you around. Um, don't you also have like a question box, like, or something like where they can just ask any questions? I've seen a couple of them that you've posted. Yes. Yeah. So each day of the week is like some sort of a fun alliteration and just a little bit of a theme that I've brought into the classroom just to help show them like the faith is so relatable and just to kind of bring it to everyday life. Um, so like on Mondays, we do a musical Monday. So I'll pick like a fun Christian song and like play that. And they, they, they've asked me like for a playlist at the end of the year, because <laughs> some of their favorite songs and everything. Oh, um, I love to, it. I love like, it on Tuesdays it's take time Tuesday so we take time with Mary and we do like a decade of the rosary together um which they love that as well and then Wednesday is Wonder Wednesday so I put a question box out and give the kids a chance to ask questions about the faith um sometimes they're personal questions but most of the time they want an answer to something that they've always wondered about or they thought it was always this way um, about the Catholic faith and we just simply like talk through it and it's interesting because some days we'll spend one question and take it through like the entire class we'll talk about it and it'll be follow-up question after follow-up question um, some days we go through the questions much faster but it's been a gift to see kind of how free they feel to ask a question that when I was their age, I probably didn't feel mm -hmm. the freedom to like question my faith in that sense and not with doubt, but just to be like, I just have always wondered about this. And for their freedom, they've asked some real questions, real deep questions where I've had to follow up and be like, I got to talk to a priest about this, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, because they have just asked very deep questions and, you know, they're really thinking through a lot of things mm -hmm. um and then thursday like i said is testament thursday so scripture and adoration and then friday's friendship friday with saints so we get to know our friends our saints so oh, yeah i love it that's that's really good um uh training for motherhood i know 
Oh gosh. It was like two weeks ago. I was sitting at the breakfast table with my kids and my seven-year-old started asking me like, how come in all of the Bibles, it shows Adam and Eve, like normal humans like us. But then in the science book, it's saying that we evolved from like ape-like humans. And I was like, um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, it's a good thing your godfather is a priest. So I'll just text him about that and we can discuss this later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not ready for that today. Yeah, Not ready, <laughs> but it's, it's good. It keeps you like, they're going to wonder, you're going to wonder. Um, and uh, like, you know, faith and reason we, there is an answer. It's there somewhere. We just got to go find it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It keeps me grounded. I would say that that's how I feel. Sometimes it's so easy as an adult to get so theoretical with things and to want to dive even deeper with certain topics with them. And then they just bring you back so fast because they just ask the simplest things like, um, like, why do you think Mother Mary said yes to Jesus? You know, it's, it's just, I, I don't think about that on a regular basis, but to pray on that, I tell them sometimes I save these questions for myself to like pray with because mm. it's so real and so deep, um, but tangible um, mm. because it's coming from such little hearts. So, yeah. yeah. And Mary, I was um, also thinking you not only are you a teacher and you're teaching these little hearts but you also are helping with a lot of different things in our spiritual family do you want to could you share a little bit what other things you're involved in and where you're able to pour your gifts into our random christian yeah. family yeah for sure um i mainly started getting involved as a young adult through ecyd so just a lot of the summer camps and retreats and things here in cincinnati that's how i got plugged in um, which is a gift because I've been able to share that in the few years with my sister Rachel as well as she, since she's been here. Um, been able to do some national conventions and things where I've met just so many awesome Raiden Christie members from all over and it's been a gift. Um, I've helped plan like national mission trips and World Youth Days, things like that, which has been such a blast to be a part of and be involved in. Um, but currently, I help support the Red and Christie Music Collective with just some logistics and coordination and things like that, which is such a gift. Um, and then um, right now I'm actually working part time for the national office, um, doing some uh, project management and administra administration. So which I'm excited, like I'll be doing that full time starting June and transitioning out of teaching, which the Lord has put that in full circle the last few years. It's wow. been my entire dream <laughs> to work for in Christy. Um, and for this, like for our spiritual family that I love so deeply. So yeah, just involved that way. And then young adult life here. And uh, I forget everything I'm doing, honestly, so often, <laughs> but um, I'm mission youth, uh, Holy Week missions director here in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. So just kind of helping in ground a little bit. Wow. It feels very theor theoretical on a lot of things because yeah. I'm helping in the national office more. Wow. So, yeah. But just pouring yourself out and all your gifts and talents. And uh, that's so exciting that you're going to be able to work full time for, for the for the RC family. So that's that's great. Thank Mary. you. Yeah, I'm very excited. So um, you also mentioned RC Music Collective. For our listeners that don't know what that is, could you just explain um, what, what that is and where they can find that music? Yes, go check it out on YouTube for sure. But Raiden Christie Music Collective is a group of our fam spiritual family members, um, a couple priests, consecrated lay members, young uh, musicians who have come together um, through the spiritual family to help share the gift of music through um through their their own personal talents but also the grace of their experiences through the movement um so we've been together for a few years now four years i think so um always releasing more new songs i'm super excited we'll have a few coming up in easter season so um <laughs> always be on the lookout i'm i i get so excited even though i know the plan <laughs> but yeah, so Aww. it's it's been a beautiful gift to work with them and to just see the gift being so like evidently effective in in the hearts of so many through the music. So 
Yeah, oh, we, can yeah. put, we can put the link to the Spotify and YouTube in the show notes so that the listeners yes. can go ahead and listen to to our spiritual For family. Sure. Their singing, well, and, so. and hopefully somewhere down the road, we'll have some of the wonderful women that are actually like doing the singing or the playing or whatever, yeah. like joining us here on the podcast. I'm, I'm already committing you guys. I'm sorry. I know you uh, I'm sure they will love it. <laughs> We're, coming said for yes you. Yet. <laughs> We're coming for you. You're going to speak. You're going to sing. It's going to be awesome. I know <laughs> my kids love the music. My little two-year-old often walks around the house where you welcome me, where you welcome me, I where love you it. welcome me. And it just like, it <laughs> makes my heart so happy. I love it. I love it. Mm. That's so special. Well, since we're sitting around the table with our Italian food, um, <laughs> we thought we could also just end with what we're thankful for from this conversation. If there's just been something that someone has said or an inspiration. And I also just invite all the listeners as well, just to take this time to, uh, to just give thanks to our Lord and King for his goodness and his glory in the life of Mary and for this conversation I know myself personally, I just have been, I, I, it literally brought tears to my eyes, that personal love that Jesus has for us and mm-hmm. um, how he's, he's always there with us, no matter what, what country, what place, what circumstance, what trial, what trauma he is there. And it's that, I think I just want to give thanks for that personal love and, um, that that's a, a very special gift, I believe, that our charism can give to the world is to meet this 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 God who is man and who wants to walk beside us and live intimately our life. So that's what I mm-hmm. want to give thanks for at the end of this this little gathering. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I would say for me, oh gosh, so many things, but um. I just am super grateful for the people in my life who have just so intentionally shown me and directed me towards that personal love that you were talking about. I would say, I think in big ways or little ways, those deep relationships and friendships that I have, um, either through the move, our movement, um, or even just like you guys, you know, I've known you for so long, but just you help continue to reveal a part of him kind of like what I've said before reveal a part of him that I wouldn't know if it wasn't for the people in my life um so I just always thank God for that for new friendships for old friendships um that continue to guide me closer to him help me fall in love with him even more uh because I really wouldn't be where I am without actually those people who have accompanied me um the friendships that have been present um old and new ones so yeah that, mm-hmm. that would be my mind yeah I think just ec- echoing sort of what you both have said I um I'm so grateful for our Lord's presence in the Eucharist I think um it's obviously been on many hearts and minds with the Eucharistic Congress approaching but just to take that moment to really stop and realize the gift the gift of the Eucharist, that he is present, um, waiting for us at all times uh, to to stop by and say hello. I know that the it was through Random Christie and through like that I learned um the idea of stopping to make a visit, you know, mm-hmm. uh just popping in to say hi. It doesn't have to be super long, it doesn't have to be anything uh deep or emotional, just to um just two hearts connecting for a moment. Uh, And I always like to think of the sanctuary candle as the heartbeat of Jesus. I think it's always really cool uh, that the, the candle um, sometimes the candle, sometimes just the glass, but it's, it's red. It just makes me uh, ponder that it's a real person there um, with a real heart that longs to see me. And, um, I think this conversation especially just kind of helped me remember that he's there and he's wanting, he's wanting to see us. He wants us to come visit him. So mm-hmm. I'm very, very grateful for our Lord in the Eucharist. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Mary, for coming and for being our first guest here on, on the podcast and for all our listeners, I hope that you've also just been blessed by this story and, um, 
Mary's heart. We hope that you've been encouraged and you've been inspired on your own journey to the Father as you also listen for his heartbeats and for him to speak into your life so you understand um, what he has called you to for this moment. God bless.